Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. About six topics for this video. And the first topic has to do with a, again, massive Russian drone attack on Ukraine. More than 100 drones launched on Ukraine last night. We're going to discuss uh, the details, uh, which are um, how many drones the Ukrainians claim they downed, how many just went away back to mommy, and uh, what targets the Russians aimed at, and where the drones were launched from. That's the first topic. The second topic, Russia warns Israel that if Israel attacks Iranian nuclear sites, then what? Remember, when you warn someone, when you threaten someone, you threaten or you warn with some steps, with some actions. I wonder what actions Russia will take against Israel. Well, we're going to discuss that one. Donald Trump made some, uh, this is the third topic. Donald Trump make, makes some statements. And one, Zelensky lost. Zelensky, the greatest salesperson in the history of mm, humankind or mankind. Third one, Biden administration kind of provoked what's going on in Ukraine. This is according to Donald Trump. Uh, we're going to discuss each and every statement or at least claim we find out that uh, the north koreans are about to send 12,000 troops so they didn't send them yet they're about to send them that's the first one and the other one there are 11,000 north korean troops military pop up pop, pop, pop. next to ukraine ready to enter combat by November 1st. So there's two news and this is from the South Koreans and from the Ukrainian intelligence services, Mr. Budanov, the chief over there. So 11,000 ready to fight by 1st of November, 12,000 ready to be shipped to be trained so they can enter combat duty. Do you believe that's true? Well, we want to find out, right? The other thing, <laughs> this is stupid here, but anyway, I will, uh, I will report it. The Russians are so smart that they are going to camouflage those North Korean troops as Buryats. Buryats is a Mongolian ethnic group located in uh, Siberia. It is south, it's east, southeast uh, Russia. So they look in a certain way. So they say this is a Buryat battalion, but actually there are North Koreans fighting as Buryats. Um, maybe these guys are lying, but nevertheless, we're going to discuss that <laughs> garbage. Is it possible? 100%. Probable? They don't have to camouflage them. Like these guys with their uh, so-called volunteers entering Ukraine. Those are not volunteers. Some of them are. Some of them are, I think, regular NATO troops just take their uniforms off in Poland take their volunteer uniforms on, take a picture, put it right here in case they are bum banged by the Russians, and then, hey, it's a volunteer. All right. So, the Russians are advancing in key points along, I would say, along the entire, maybe not Zaporozhye, um, yeah, Zaporozhye as well, uh, maybe Kherson, not Kherson, but everywhere else, uh, the Russians are advancing. And I have here, Three settlements where the Russians take over or advance towards. And not only Pokrovsk, which, you know, is going to be surrounded, encircled, but Selidove. I'm going to show you maps regarding these um, reports. That comes not only from the um, Russians, is reported by um, Western media, but they use the Russian sources. That means those things are kind of accurate. Kupiansk. Now, in Kupiansk, we have a big problem. Residents start fleeing the town. Why? The Russians are coming. Hannibal is at port or whatever it is. Uh, is at the port. Is at the port. <laughs> is at the gate. Hannibal. Remember the Romans when Hannibal showed up with his uh, troops? Hannibal at Porte. I think that's the way it is. Uh, Hannibal is at the gate. <laughs> Fight, motherfuckers. Fight. All right. Let's start with the first topic. Ukrainska Pravda. Ukrainian air defenses destroy 80 Russian UAVs over Ukraine. 44 disappear from radar. 
about 11 still in air. So that's 124, 134 altogether right here. Russian forces attacked Ukraine with 135. Hmm. They missed one right here, but anyway. Loitering munitions on the night of 17th to 18th of October. Ukrainian air defense units have shot down 80 drones. 40 others disappeared from radar. Is it because they hit the targets or because you uh, destroy them with your um, little electronic warfare machines? Two entered Belarus and about 10 UAVs are still in Ukrainian airspace. So we got two entering Belarus. That would still make uh, not 35, 36. No? Yeah, anyway, the Air Force air surveillance troops have detected and tracked 135 enemy drones as of 8.30 a.m. Ukraine's air defense units have destroyed 80 Russian UAVs in Odessa, Sumy, Cherkasy, Kiev, Zatomir, Kirovohrad, Chernihiv, Poltava, Melnitsky, Rivnia, Kharkiv, Kherson, Volin and Vinitsia Oblast. So let's see where those are located, shall we? And I was ready with something else, but nevertheless, we have this map of Ukraine. Ba -bam. So everything, consider all this, pla until right, Rivnio, only Lutsk, Lutsk, Lvov, Ivno Frankovsk, Uzgorod, this area here, Cherny, pa, 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 this is this were not attacked, but Kmelnitsky was attacked, Zatomir was Vinitsia, Odessa, and all these things right here was so mostly. Well, I'll say 70, 80 percent of Ukraine, maybe even more, was attacked with these drones. All right, he says the Russians launched attack drones on Ukraine during the evening of pop pop pop. All right, well, where did you uh, uh, where did you launch them from? I tell you where they launched them from. Usually they launch them from here, Cape Chauda, right here, this area by the Kirsch Bridge. And then you got Primorsko Aktarsk, which is right here across from the Sea of Azov, and usually from Kursk when they come from north. Kursk is, you see, Radio Vakans. Here it is, Kursk. So these are the areas. So let's go to the second topic. And second topic is the Russians are warning the Israelis. Um, with what? Are you going to threaten them? With what? We'll find out, right? Are you going to nuke the guys? <laughs> here it is. This is according to Reuters, and you can believe that, right? Russia tells Israel to not even consider attacking Iranian nuclear facilities, TASS says. Russia is warning Israel to not even consider striking Iranian nuclear facilities, state news agency TASS quoted Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov as saying on Thursday. After Israel pop up, up there have been speculation that Israel could strike Iran's nuclear facilities. That means Iran will hit the Israelis' uh, nuclear facilities. And I'm quoting, we have repeatedly warned and continue to warn to caution Israel against ev even hypothetically considering the possibility of a strike on Iranian nuclear facilities and nuclear infrastructure. This would be a catastrophic deplo uh, development. You know what the catastrophe is? Oh my God. And a complete negation of all existing principles in the area of ensuring nuclear safety. It was not clear in what form Moscow had conveyed such a message to Israel. So what do you think? Will they hit it? I think if Israel wants to hit them, they will hit them. Uh, the United States can bark or can pretend that it opposes or puts pressure. The United States is a lapdog. All right, the same, the Brits, I don't even consider them. So what could Russia do? Well, if these guys hit the nuclear sites, then I guarantee you the Iranians will hit the Israelis' nuclear sites. But I know, I know it's only rock and roll and the Iron Dome plus the THAAD air defense systems with American uh, troops over there, military, they will destroy all, that's 100% exactly, of the Iranian uh, missiles that will be launched on the nuclear sites. Why? Because they're good, man. All right. Uh, what can they do? I think it's going to be a um, catastrophic uh, development. Next one. Zelensky has lost as Trump. It's not Zelensky. Zelensky is a baboon 
how do you call it, pion, peon, you know, when you play chess, it's a guy over there who has to do his little uh, puck, 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 that's all. He can't do anything else. He's just a guy who, yes, sir. The problem is, why did you need that guy, that guy, that kind of person in charge of the Ukrainian nation? Um, they couldn't trust the Ukrainians? All right, let's see. Let's look at this article. This comes from Russia Today. Zelensky has lost. The Republican candidate also blamed US President Joe Biden for provoking the conflict with Russia. Uh, if you guys are still doubt that, stay tuned here. Former US President Donald Trump has declared that Ukrainian, because Zelensky is Ukrainian, has already lost, quote unquote, the conflict with Russia. The Republican candidate also accused President Joe Biden of quote unquote, provoking the fighting in the first place. And I'm quoting, that war is a loser, end quote. Trump said on the PBD podcast on Thursday, criticizing Zelensky as a great salesman who repeatedly secured bill billions in US aid without securing victory. Trump added that the conflict could have been avoided had he remained in charge after the 2020 elections. Trump also blamed Biden for escalating tensions with Russia, claiming that his statements ahead of the Moscow launching its military operation were the exact opposite of the what should have been said. He also expressed confidence that he could resolve the issue swiftly in re if re returned to office in November's vote. And I'm quoting, if you watch his words, I'm quoting Trump, in the run up to the conflict. His words were the exact opposite of what he should have been saying. He instigated that war, according to Trump. Putin is no angel, but everything, everything Biden said was wrong. End quote. Trump pointing out. And again, Trump states that should have never happened. I agree with that. About Zelensky, he said every time, and I'm quoting, Zelensky is one of the greatest salesmen I have ever seen. Every time he comes in to the US, we give him, yeah, you give him a hundred billion dollars. Who else got that kind of money in history? Well, let me explain who and how. Um, I will give you just a clue. Remember Henry Ford, the first, yeah, all right, Henry Ford, that bad guy that I like very much. He stated in one of his, I know, anti this, uh, you know, newspapers, um, the, what was that, uh, independent, right? Um, he, and then he was made, he made, turned it into a Dearborn, Dearborn independent. And then he, he owned that. And then 1920s, and then he made a book out of all those articles. And in those, uh, he said, and that the book that I read, the international, all right. Uh, he said that if you give these guys, if you make sure that you keep these guys following the same rules everybody else follows, they will not uh, ex uh, excel at money and business and all that. So Zelensky and I, um, I agree with that. I don't think they have anything extra than others. I mean, a bazaar, uh, you know, other are working the bazaar as well, not only these guys. So. My point is here, what I think about Zelensky being a salesman, if you have a salesman that goes to ask for people that will give him because are his buddies, of course he's going to be the best salesman, but the game is rigged. If someone else would go over there and those will not be his buddies, I don't know, how, group members, they would not secure it. But he secures because important people from his group, you know, open doors for them, for him. And it was very easy. So that's the reason, Trump. And if you don't know that, or if you are afraid to say that, that makes my point again. You don't, you don't know that, that makes you this. If you know that, but you keep your mouth shut, he proves that. Exactly what Henry Ford said. Regarding, um, what's his name, Biden with uh, instigating, uh, they just uh, did not want to talk to the Russians with their security concerns. They knew. They knew, I mean, they have experts and analysts are not dumb and are just crooked. So they told these guys, this is what's going to happen. And the guy said, yeah, that's great. That's exactly what we want. And they made the phone call to Raytheon, uh, Lockheed Martin and Dynamics and uh, whatever else. Guys, ready, get ready. Uh, you're going to work three shifts. And the bank said, 
ready. Let me warm up my finger so I can put some uh, zeros. And then he said, hey, guys of the treasury, get your machines ready for printing some money. And you guys uh, get ready. You're going to have a lot of inflation. Your children ain't great children. Why? Because we uh, spread democracy and freedom. Well, if you want to subscribe to that kind of easy debunking or easily debunking garbage, well, it's your choice. But I know who's going to pay all these uh, expenses. You're going to pay them too. I am too. So let's see how the North Koreans send large scale troops deployment, how they deploy a lot of troops in Russia. Now, is it true? That's the first one. And then the second one is, how do you know it's true? And then you say, well, he said it, he said, yeah, but these guys are, you know, liars. They lied before. Uh, they will be lying in the future. What do you do? Wait. Wait and look for, um, <coughs> for other sources and try to, I know, verify if that's accurate. As I said, is it possible? 100%. Probable? I don't think so. I will give you that percentage in a minute. Agency France Press. This is October 18th, 2024. North Korea sending large-scale troops deployment to Russia. South Korea spy agency said. Now, these guys are not North Korea's friends. <laughs> so, all right. Unfortunately, brothers fight brothers again, like uh, uh, Ukrainians fight Russians. North Korea has decided to send a large-scale troop deployment to support Moscow wartime with 1,500 special forces already in Russia's Far East and undergoing training. So there are 1,500 already there training, but that's not it. Right here, Ukraine form. This guy, who uh, not, would not lie, man, at all, Budanov. 11,000 North Korean troops will be ready to fight against Ukraine in zwei Wochen in two weeks right there and it says the troops are training in eastern russia to start fighting against ukraine in november east russia is where these guys claim these guys are and far east russia so this guy says it's 1500 this guy says no 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 it's 11,000. kirillo budanov the head of ukraine defense intelligence said this in an interview with the war zone ukraine form report they will be ready to fight in ukraine on november 1st he said, end quote, said Budanov, adding that nearly 11,000 soldiers from North Korea are currently training in eastern Russia. The first cadre of 2,600 soldiers will go to Kursk region. According to Budanov, it is unclear where the remaining North Korean troops will go. So 2,600 in Kursk. Kursk, right here, where these guys invaded um, Russia. These guys being Western... Uh, and so on. All right, let's go and see what else. Where are we? I think we're right here. This is the war zone. Remember, this is the interview conducted with Budanov by the war zone. Nearly 11,000 North Korean troops in Russia preparing to enter the first the, the fight, says Ukraine spy boss. This is according to October 17, 2024. Well, these are losers. We know them. This will not shoot, but maybe two yards. And these guys are just hungry for food. So, no, they will not be unlike us. There are nearly 11,000 North Korean infantry troops training in eastern Russia to fight in Ukraine. They will be ready to fight on November 1st, Lieutenant General Kirill Budanov told TWZ. Again, the same thing with 2,600. We don't have the full picture right now. Well, you're going to cook it. The hell is this first? Look at this. You don't put blue on blue like that. Two nuances of blue. This is garbage. Anyway, is that your Coke over there? <laughs> Cocaine, I mean, not Coke. You know what I mean? Here, you can leave this and try to be more mature. You're not. You're a 39 year old now. Budanov comments uh, came hours after Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky told reporters in Brussels that there are about 10,000 North Korean troops preparing to fight his country on behalf of Russia. Right there. They are ready to enter, my friends. Ready to enter. On Tuesday, Ukrainian media reported about 3,000 troops were forming part of the Special Buryat Battalion organized within the 11th Separate Airborne Assault Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces to fight in Ukraine. So Buryat, as I said, is that um, Mongolian ethnic group 
in Far East, in Southeast uh, uh, Russia, and they are you know, a mix with the North Korea, and you're not going to distinguish who's who, what's what, and we believe them. Again, clear Ukrainska Pravda, he says 11 North 11,000 North Korean soldiers to fight against Ukraine by 1st of November. And the same things here, 2,600, and they, we got the Institute for the Study of War report that they are always, not always, but, you know, don't trust those guys. Verify. Again, DPR sending 12,000 troops to Russia for war against Ukraine. South Korean intelligence. This is today, 18. So they are already over there, 11,000. Now we're going to send more. South Korean National Intelligence Services said Friday that North Korea regime has decided to send in the future 12,000 soldiers to Russia to engage in the war against Ukraine. So 12,000 plus 11,000 plus 2,600 or whatever they say, they're going to be a lot of people. Intelligence assessments assesses there are four brigades of up to 12,000 soldiers, including special operations forces. The agency added that their uh, deployment has already begun. Got that? All right, so they already know that. What can you do about it? Well, how about NATO will go and help Ukraine because of that? According to no New Voice of Ukraine, Russia to disguise North Korean soldiers as Buryats for war in Ukraine, Center for Countering Disinformation. <laughs> oh my God, war is peace and peace is war. What do you want from me? I'm not going to support you. Right there. Click. All right, North Korean soldiers who will be fighting alongside Russia in the war against Ukraine will be disguised as Buryats and are expected to be combat ready by November. Andriy Kovalenko, Kovalenko, the Center for Countering Information head, wrote on October 18th. So that means that every blonde guy who enters Ukraine as a volunteer, we can say is German or I don't know, Norwegian. Oh, they're not like that. How do I know? I watch football. <laughs> Look how the team looks. <laughs> All uh, right, so here they are ready to go where, man? They are ready to go to Kursk Oblast. And not only, North Korean soldiers are now undergoing training in Russia's Bryansk Oblast. So they are, they are already undergoing training in Bryansk. They will be sent to Kursk Oblast and potentially to Belgorod Oblast. So let me show you where Bryansk is, where they train and where they're going to enter. So Bryansk, right here in the north. This is the... Uh, right north this is ukraine this is where ukraine lies this is where they are training and they're supposed to enter the war in kursk and right here in belgorod right in this area got that and that's a fact if you believe that where were we let's see oh right here next one russian forces advance near three settlements in donetsk oblast while these guys are telling this information this information not disinformation the russians are advancing without the north koreans the russian troops made new territorial grains near shasiv yar maximilianivka and tsukurinia in donetsk oblast deep state, state monitoring group report on october 18th the total number of combat engagements along the entire front lines has increased to 191 over the past day so where see where let's see where these things are located you see this it's all done it's where i had by the right kuryakova or whatever it's called Missy, me maximilianovka maximilianovka is right here now this is selidovo where it's going to be falling this is kuryakovo the ones that they were talking about, the Russians advancing. And this is Maximilianovka in this area. This is in Donetsk. And if you look a little bit north, right here, this is Pokrovsk. Pokrovsk, but they call it different. The Russians call it Krasnoarmeisk. So this area is screwed. <coughs> Including the fact that these guys in Ugledar advance here towards Vel Velikaya no Soli Lerhi. No so le no so selga. I'm sorry. Here it is. And then uh, advance here. It's advancing everywhere, my friends, and everywhere. And here, look what's going on here. And go to Shasir Yar. They are north of this, or Shasov Yar. It's west of Artemovsk. They are advancing here. So, my friends, these guys are advancing in Donetsk, the biggest. 
this right here. But we're going to find out in Kupiansk, people run. They are refugees. Kupiansk is how these guys advance and try to uh, surround this, encircle it. So let's see, where were we? Where were we, baby doll? Right here. They show the same you know, advance. The enemy launched 47 strikes using uh, 83 guided bombs. Okay, we got them from line situation. Russia has captured, had captured three settlements near a city of Mirnohrad in Donetsk Oblast, namely Mikolaivka, Krasnyar, and Krutyar. So these guys are going ahead without, without um, the help of the North Koreans. Next. Russian troops aiming to surround Seliadove in Donbas. Seliadove is. Oh, come on. And this area right here. In this area here. So, exactly this is uh, the same thing as they reported in the other article. Next one. Russia takes control of a village in eastern Ukraine, according to Ria, Novo, uh, Ria Novosti, and is a Maximilianovka, Nivka, less than 10 kilometers, six miles from key city of Kuragkove. So there's six miles for, from this. They're gonna go advance, and what's gonna happen? Gonna ask for peace, or are you gonna, uh, what, have NATO intervene for you? Residents, this is the last topic, residents flee Ukraine's Kupiansk as Russia presses down on northeast hub. Kupiansk. Kupiansk is in far east of Ukraine. This is Kupiansk. Yeah, Kupiansk is, I'm sorry, right here. This is uh, Kharkiv, Kharkov Oblast. Kupiansk is the one I showed you in dire straits. Bad situation here. So the Russians are breaking the front all over. So let's see what else these guys tell us about Kupiansk. <coughs> all right, they tell us that uh, Yulia by Bak, Papa, ba ba bu bu. Kiev's troops reclaimed Kupiansk six months after it's captured by Russia in February 2022 invasion, but it has come under increasing attacks as Moscow steps up an offensive along the sprawling Eastern Front. Further south, Kremlin troops are advancing village by village in the industrial Donetsk region to threaten other key transit hubs that supply much of Ukraine's eastern force. The front will collapse. Kupiansk residents interviewed by Reuters reported sleepless nights under Papapap, some 100 kilometers, 62 miles east of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. I, talk, I told you about that. Right here, Kharkiv, Kharkov is here. This is Kupiansk, just so you know again what we're talking about here. In some parts, Moscow troops are as close as four kilometers from the city limits. Four kilometers here, four kilometers. Regional governor said on Ukrainian television this week, he said he ordered the evacu evacuation because constant Russian shelling had rendered repairs to the local electricity heat and water too difficult. Speaking to reports in Kharkiv on Thursday, Shinya Hubov said the priority was to evacuate the entire civilian population from the left bank of the Oskil River or around 4,000 people. So that is, you see, that's a river here, cuts. This is the big part of Kupians, this is a small part. So we're talking about the small part right here. The left bank, that's the eastern bank. They're going to move to the western bank. A west bank. <laughs> okay, so, conclusion. The Ukrainian front, the entire front, could collapse any day, I would say. Any day. And uh, what's going to happen next? I think it's going to be possibly a little um, military coup in Ukraine. Or the Ukrainian, some Ukrainian units or generals will decide that enough is enough and being a vassal state uh, to those guys is uh, unacceptable and maybe they try a, again, a neutrality. I don't think will ever happen that Ukraine would be neutral again. It's going to be either Russian 
influence or NATO occupation. Um, that's the, the future of Ukraine. Unless these guys blow all of us up with their zealot meeting of their whatever they... Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.